All right. Um, hopefully everyone can see um, um, my screen. Do you see the, um, the slide that uh, shows the opening? It says identifying your research topic? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Sometimes you can't see that little green outline that says this is the screen that you're sharing. And I, I just wanted to make sure. Um, my name is Susan Bontley, and I'm one of the um, instructional librarians for Donyana Community College. Um, I work at the Espina branch, which is right next to NMSU. Uh, we are doing, we've been doing this series of research strategy workshops for quite some time, several semesters. And with each iteration, we're refining it. Um, this is the second time we've done this smaller version of it, where it should take, I'm hoping, about 30, 35 minutes, depending on questions and um, uh, things that might need to be looked at a little bit um, closely. Uh, we hope that uh, you will find it very useful. If you have any questions, um, let me go to the next slide, which talks about the housekeeping. Uh, any technical difficulties, um, like if you can't hear me, you can't um, uh, see the slide, it's blurry, whatever, um, please put it in the chat box. Usually I have a technical person in my, uh, to manage that, but I'm on my own today. Uh, so uh, forgive me if it takes me a minute to see, I've got the chat box up, but um, I will um, try and keep an eye on it. Um, Yes, the presentation is being recorded. Um, a transcript will be available um, and we will put it up on our research search strategies workshop um, webpage, which I'll give you the link shortly um, for uh, you to use later on and refer back to. I've got a backlog of um, uh, videos to edit, so please be patient. If you'd like to see it right away, I can send you the unedited link, which means it's a little bit longer. It's got a couple of of dead spaces in it probably. I usually clean it up a little bit so that the transcript makes more sense when you read it. Anyway, uh, please make sure your microphones are muted. Um, that way any background noise in your on your part won't disturb the presentation. Um, I've closed my door and hopefully the cats that I own will not get um, too noisy out there. Uh, usually they don't. Um, and then if you have any questions that you would like answered, I will pause a couple of times during the presentation. But if you have a question and you don't want to forget it, go ahead and type it in the chat box and add a pause. I'll go ahead and try to answer it. So then let's get started. Today's objectives. Um, we're going to talk about the basic steps of the research process. Um, then we're going to talk about why it's a good idea to do a little bit of research before you actually do your research. Um, and then we're going to um, talk about resources and tools for exploring topics, things that are available online, um, tools we've gathered, um, as well as our own databases here at DACC. And the, many of these are available also at NMSU. Uh, for you to explore topics if you haven't chosen one yet, and then some um, tips and tricks, strategies to how to narrow or expand your topic if you're finding out from your preliminary search you're running into some issues. Basic steps. Identify and develop your topic, do a preliminary search, locate your materials, Evaluate your sources, take notes, write your paper, cite it, do the citations properly, and um, then proofread it. And a lot of people forget step number eight, and that's where they get hung up, maybe lose a few points if you're doing an assignment, if you're writing a journal article um, and you want to submit it, or a magazine article. Um, you know, sometimes you get um, some points knocked off, or you get it sent back to you, say, Look at the editing process. Anyway, proofreading is an important part and we, NMSU has um, the Writing Center and DACC has the ARC where they have tutors and people that can help you with that if um, you think you need a second set of eyes. I created this nifty graphic uh, here to talk about what we're gonna be, um, the, the process itself. Um, 
identify your topic, explore your topic, narrow, expand your topic, and create your research uh, question. Those are the first two um, parts of our um, workshop strategies, uh, our research strategies workshops. Uh, then you can get into the next um, uh, step, which is uh, to generate your keywords and choose your databases. And then you, it's an iterative cycle where you then slowly are improving your results. That's going to be another workshop that I do. Um, then you identify your sources, you evaluate them, and that includes checking for bias. That's um, the fourth uh, workshop. And then um, the, the next step, which is make your notes and write your paper, there's not a workshop on that part. That's all on you. And then the last one is citing your sources, and that's our fifth workshop. So all of this process here is um, uh, just an encapsulated um, view in one page of the steps you need to go to, to from start to finish on um, doing a research assignment or um, researching for an article, like I said, or a magazine or anything, pretty much. So first question is, why do you do a search to do your research? It's really important to do this because a lot of times students choose topics that are either overwhelming or more importantly, they're too narrow and they struggle to find resources to support their evidence, you know, to use as evidence to support their argument. Time and time again, I've worked with students that um, the topic's great, but it's really hard to find academic resources for it or current resources for it. So it's always a good idea so that you don't waste a lot of time to do a search to make sure there's enough resources out there um, within the bounds of your assignment. So like if your professor says, oh, you can only use one website and you have to have, you know, three journal articles and you're only allowed to use one book or whatever restrictions they put on it, um, you have a better idea. Well, maybe it's all newspaper articles that you are finding to support your topic. Then you need to rethink your topic. And then that's where the preliminary helps you refine it a little bit. It, it, it gives you some ideas because as you're reading, doing your preliminary research, you're going, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I wonder if there's information about that or if someone is, has written about that or spoken about that. Uh, that. That way you can find the gaps. You can find um, information that will help you keep your topic narrow if your topic is too broad or expand your topic if your topic is too narrow. And that way you don't, the time spent in this phase is really important because you're gathering possible sources that you could use later on if you stick with your topic, but also you're eliminating things so that you don't end up spending hours chasing after a topic that in the end, you really can't write about and get a good grade on your assignment. Any questions at this point? No, ma'am. Okay, well then let's move on. We have lots of resources for exploring topics and we actually recommend uh, three major databases that um, DACC subscribes to and NMSU does. Um, they're called CQ Researcher, Gale's uh, Opposing Viewpoints, and EBSCO's uh, Points of View. These are um, what, uh, databases that are set up to explore trending topics, controversial topics, topics with more than one viewpoint attached to them. And a lot of times uh, we help um, English, um, I think it's 1110 now, the first English composition class, and they have a requirement to write, write an argumentative paper. But if you're also writing, let's say you're in a con class, in a speech class, public speaking, you might have to participate 
in a debate or do a persuasive speech on a topic. These are three databases that will really help you get several sides to a topic, see information so you can create, you can craft a really good argument or a persuasive um, writing to get your reader or your listener to um, agree with you or, um, or make a choice or do something as a response to why you're writing. So those are the three that we recommend um, that students use to um, explore topics and see what's out there. Um, the CQ researcher is really good at putting everything all in one package that you can download and read later on various topics. Um, the other two, they do put them in um, topic packages, but you have to download the components within them. Another good source for um, exploring topics is newspapers because the most timely, um, the most current trendy things are usually found in newspaper articles. And we have free um, newspaper um, uh, databases. The NMSU has a couple of extra ones, but the ones that DACC has are as newspaper source. Um, and that comes from EBSCO, uh, the Gale One File News. And then Newsbanks is um, something we get through the um, New Mexico State Library, and it focuses mainly on um, New Mexico news. So you'll get like the Albuquerque Journal, uh, I think it's the Santa Fe, uh, whatever the Santa Fe paper is, and the Las Cruces Sun News, you can get it there. It's not a reproduction of the newspaper in the sense of a, a PDF with all the pictures and the ads and stuff. It's just the individual text of the articles that you'll find. And then another place to explore topics are references, encyclopedias, dictionaries, especially specialized dictionaries that don't just have a small thing that you would get from a regular dictionary with a definition, but have pages of information about a specific topic. Um, atlases, if you're um, sometimes annotated atlases have um, additional information about places and um, specific maybe history sites and things like that. Um, encyclopedia, obviously. Um, now, a lot of these reference books are not considered to be academic sources. They're general sources that you would use to explore your topic. But in the end, unless you're using a specific definition out of a dictionary or something, and you can quote that, um, you can't cite these as academic um, sources. They're just too general. But for the purpose of purposes of exploration, these sources are really, really good for you to get a broad idea. Also textbooks. Um, if you're um, writing a paper related to a specific class, especially like a history class or something, there might be stuff in the textbook that at least gives you an idea of where to start exploring. All of this information is on our website, um, the um, particular page, and a lot more. Just um, the information here, the links to the databases will be there, and you can um, go directly to the website and then click on the link, and it will jump you to the sign-in page uh, where you'll need to put in your NMSU credentials and um, go ahead and log in and you'll have access to that particular database or that resource. Other places, and it's the internet age, obviously. A lot of people say, um, well, I don't think I need to go to the database just yet, or I don't wanna spend my time. I'm just gonna jump on my favorite browser and Google it. Well, there's a lot of stuff out there. And our um, workshop on evaluating your sources, that's the, um, will tell you whether or not you're getting good information or bad information. But in the exploration phase, the defining your topic phase, choosing a good research question, these resources are very useful. Wikipedia, well, actually it's Wikimedia. And these places, um, they will give you a lot of information. Not all of it may be credible, but it will get you start thinking about your topic. 
Um, the Wikimedia products include um, photographs, um, news sources, textbooks, um, a library, um, and then obviously Wikipedia. Um, those are all good places to get overviews. I do recommend to students that if you don't know much about a topic, that Wikipedia is a good place to start. If it's a, um, a well-resourced article, you might even be able to get some sources that they have cited, not Wikipedia itself, obviously, but maybe they have a New York Times article or maybe they have a journal article that they've gotten information from. Um, those might be useful sources that are credible and you can evaluate them. But for, to get a general overview, it's not a bad place. Um, these are other places. Um, the Library of Congress has stuff. Uh, the Internet Archive, uh, Google Books, the Smithsonian, all these are just, this is just a small little snippet of what is actually out there. You know, type in your, um, your question into Google and you will get possibly a lot, you know, millions of hits. And then you have to sift, sift through it. But if you recognize some of um, the websites that the information is coming from, and you think that they might be useful, go and read about it because you're going to be getting answers to questions or you're going to be generating more questions about your topic. And maybe one of those will end up being your research question. Are there any questions yet? Not yet. All right. Okay. Tools for exploring topics. Again, all this is on the research guide. Um, all the links that to several of these different graphic organizers, um, these different um, uh, PDFs that might you might use in the process of exploring your topic. Um, but brainstorming, you know, there are brainstorming tools. Uh, brainstorming, you can brainstorm with yourself, or you can brainstorm with a colleague a fellow student, um, even a family member. But brainstorming is more along the lines of, um, what do I wanna know? What do I already know? Um, where are some of the gaps in what I do know? Those type of things. Pre-writing and outlining is another way of exploring a topic. You know, you write down um, in outline form, you know, bullets of what, uh, Again, what you know, what you don't know, what you've learned so far. Um, write all about what you know and see if there's something in there that you want to explore further. Um, we have a really good presentation, how to write good notes and outlines. And the link again is on the website, um, but uh, it will, it's another short session that'll take you through some tools specifically on writing notes and outlines. And then if you're a visual learner or someone who likes visuals, um, there are always um, these tools out there like mind maps and concept maps and other types of graphic organizers that help you collect information as you're reading and doing your preliminary exploration to find out, oh, this looks like a really good topic. I wanna to explore it further. And then you write a little bit more in your graphic organizer. Um, this one right here, the strategies for taking action, you know, that's, that's pretty um, intense there. But you could do the next one, which is a concept map, just on your own. You know, you can draw these on your own and fill in the blanks. The main topics in the middle and then topics that relate to it or around it. And then topics that relate to the related topics are around that. And you may end up choosing something in the, um, outer edges because it's specific enough that you don't get overwhelmed, but not too narrow that you um, are not finding any resources. And if that happens and you just find resources for the related topic here, and between the two, you should have enough for your paper. Any more questions or any questions? Not right now. All right. Last part is narrowing or expanding your focus. Um, 
some of the questions you can ask yourself, especially if you're doing brainstorming. Um, if you're doing a concept map, what subtopics relate to the broader topic? So if you were doing, um, and you could ask yourself all of these questions. So if you're doing something, let's say you're doing it on um, uh, marijuana, your broader topic. Okay, subtopics would be legalization maybe. Um, a subtopic might be medical marijuana, might be um, comparison to alcohol and the effects of, it might be um, recreational marijuana, it might be changes in the laws in the last three or four years. All those could be subtopics to that. Um, and then when you're exploring the, doing your preliminary source um, search, double check and see, are there any questions that um, the, what you read brings up? Why did an author say something like this? Um, where do they get their information to back up this argument that they're, they're um, citing? Where's their evidence? Um, all those types of things could lead you down a road to a really interesting to you topic, which is really important, but also um, can give you um, avenues to get more information to support um, what you're researching. And you know why? Why do you find this interesting? Is it a personal a topic related to something that's personal to you? Um, is it something that you've always been curious about? Uh, and you can even do this within an assignment that your professor um, in your class says, "Oh, choose a topic um, uh, that related to history because you're in a history class." So maybe you read something in your textbook and you go, "Hmm." Why, why is it that way? Why did they determine that this was what history says it was? Um, what evidence is out there? Uh, what do other people say about um, this topic? But always you need to have a topic that you are interested or as close to as interested as possibly being. Sometimes students are not given as much of a choice as, oh, it's a free for all, go choose anything. Um, and a lot of times when that happens, it's really hard. Students struggle with it being way too broad. So in, as a librarian, I do some um, research interviewing questions to ask them, well, are you, what are you interested in? Why are you interested in this? Um, what about it um, intrigues you? Um, what questions do you have about this topic that you like? Uh, what would you like to know more about? All of those are really good questions to ask yourself or have someone ask you, and then you start talking about it and you eventually come up and say, oh, that would be something I probably could research about and write about. That would be a good topic for me. And then if you're still struggling, there are several um, strategies you can compare and contrast it. Um, uh, especially if you've got topics um, that have more than one viewpoint, you can compare and contrast that. Um, if it's a process um, like um, global warming, okay? So we say that um, a person's carbon footprint impacts global warming. Well, how, what is the cause and the effect of that? Um, if it is a process and um, recycling is a process, well, if you wanna analyze it, maybe choose a portion of that process to investigate further, especially if you're giving an informational um, presentation. Uh, sometimes things can be classified and you can investigate, well, why are they divided this way? Why are they classified this way? Or maybe it hasn't been classified and it needs to be, and you can come up with classifications or divisions. All right, so um, I would like to, before we um, end, and again, I, like I said, I tried to keep it pretty short because that's the process, a lot more stuff is there. I would like to show you our, a couple of uh, websites. Let's go to, whoops. Uh, excuse me a second, I gotta find that. 
is it? I think it's this one. Okay. Can you all see the library homepage? I hope. Yeah. Okay. So this is our library homepage. Uh, if you type in, um, go to DACC's homepage and then go under current students and libraries, you'll get there. But if you just type in your search engine DACC library, there is another DACC on the East Coast. So make sure you get Donya Anna and not Dan, I think it's called Danville. So you get to um, the um, library homepage, you can search for um, our catalog. Here's where the databases are. And you can, the ones that I, CQ Researcher was one of them. You click there and when you hit the go button, it opens up and stuff. However, it's much easier if you go to the research guides and go down to research strategy workshops. And this is the homepage for the workshops. And the research process is right there. And then all the support on the left is, uh, is on the left. So the, what we were talking about today is right here. And it's a long page, so there is a table of contents. So here's the um, objectives. Here are the slides that you just saw right here. Basic steps again. Um, if you click on here, there's a, this is where I took their steps and I made a graphic out of it, but there's the steps with a lot more text. If you're not sure what each step includes, it, the, um, Community College um, North Hennepin will tell you. Um, then we have some, uh, uh, the Exploring uh, Resources handout is up here. And then we have a couple of very short videos on the three databases, CQ Researcher, Opposing Viewpoints, and Points of View. Um, and then we have a visual handout on how what it looks like. So you could print this off or save it to your computer and it tells you how to print things, how to save them, how to email them to yourself and how to do a just a basic search. Then as you go down, um, sometimes um, if you choose an EBSCO, if you wanna search multiple databases at once by one vendor, and we have two vendors, Gale and EBSCO, this power search, um, video and this handout here will show you how to do that. So you don't have to be bouncing around several databases, but always start with the exploration, unless let's say you're doing a history project and it might not be something that is, would be in the, um, the exploration databases. You may have to go to history databases. The power search will help you because you could look at several history databases all at once. As you can see, that's the um, uh, slide I had before. And here are all the links to the different um, uh, places I was talking about. I didn't put links to these. You can go out and find them. Type in Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and it'll come up It's the top one. Uh, for the tools, here's a bunch of um, resources, places to go that can better than myself explain how to do certain things. Brainstorming, a lot of them have um, examples. They also have worksheets you can use and much better for you to go there than for me to spend time explaining something that has been done already on the internet. Then the last one, narrowing and expanding your focus. And there's some additional tips from these particular um, locations. And then the rhetorical modes, that all depends. It's a very interesting um, how you would approach a, uh, a paper. Um, if you're doing an argument, if you're doing a description, just a narration, there's the cause and effect or the process analysis. So this is just a short, quick description of what each is and gives you an example. But they're good to have on your desktop or when you're writing. They're good to have to refer to if you need them. And then when workshop number two comes along, the second half is down there. Uh, is there anything else that um, I can answer right now? We're right at the 30 minute mark. 
Um, no, not for me. Thank you. Okay. Well, we talked about the basic steps in the research process. We talked about resources and tools for exploring the topics. And then we talked a little bit about narrowing or expanding your focus. Uh, I would highly encourage you to come to the next research workshop, which is a week from today, same time. And um, I would um, hope that you would be able to um, come in and learn a little bit more. Uh, feel free to explore the webpage I gave you. And we have one last request of people, please. Um, and I'm gonna put this in the um, uh, chat so you can just quit, hopefully copy and paste it. We do have a um, survey that helps us make uh, our presentations better. If you would please go ahead and um, fill it out. I take about uh, two minutes right now to go there and fill it out. And in the meantime, I will put in the chat um, some more links like to our website, to our other presentations. And we've been doing presentations now for about five semesters, I think. So that's really good. Um, but the website's there. Uh, you can say, you should be able to save the chat and that'll keep the, or just copy and paste them to an open word or Google doc. Uh, but I thank you for coming. I hope to see you in um, next week. And if you have any questions that you wish you had asked, please contact me. My email is right there. And if you don't remember that, just send one to the library email and that's on our homepage and say, hey, I went to this workshop on research strategies and I'm the one who's, who's conducting them. They'll know to send it to me. And I can answer you any question you even if it's next semester. Uh, I got a question just yesterday from someone who went last semester and she says, oh, I have this plagiarism question. Can you help me? And I was able to answer her question and also send her to someone who knew a lot more about what she was asking than I do. Does the NMSU library have the same content as the Doniana Community, Community College Library? When you say content, do you mean databases? Yes. Was that a yes, Susan? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, yes, there is overlap because some of our databases come from New Mexico State uh, Library and then they, they give it to higher, higher ed. However, there are some research databases that um, NMSU will have that DACC does not. And then DACC has some vocational, um, technical, and community college databases that NMSU would not. So the for the bulk of the databases, yes, we share the same databases. I mean, we they're we don't share them in the sense of sharing, but they are the same. There's overlap. There are some on the peripheral that we do not. Uh, if you can't find what you're looking for, are you an NMSU student or a DACC student? Can you NMSU? hear me? Yes, NMSU. Susan, I, your, your voice is not coming through, unfortunately. Um, oh, I'm sorry. If you are, go okay. ahead. Ah, NMSU, thank you. Okay, so that is where you would start. Um, DACC databases may not be available to you, but all of the databases that I listed um, in the presentation and on the website um, are available from at NMSU, but you will have to go search for them from the NMSU library's website. In other words, the link that you use um, on the, um, the library guide that I showed you won't work for you, but CQ Researcher is one of the databases that you will find at the NMSU library. And same with the, two, the EBSCO points, um, points of view and the um, Gale um, opposing viewpoints. So that stuff is there. You just have to go through their library website as opposed to 
DACCs? I hope that answers that question. Does anyone else have a question? I well, don't I appreciate... have any questions. Oh, yes, Emily. Oh, no, I don't have any questions. I was just going to see that we will see you or hear you next week as well. Oh, well, great. I'm glad you come. Um, I appreciate it. I know some of you are coming from um, uh, Ms. A Strikes class, I think is. Um, yes. And I, she's a big fan of mine. I've never met the woman, but I really, I'm a big fan of her too, because she recommends to her students regularly to come to the classes. And the feedback I've heard from uh, her is that they've helped them, her students. So I appreciate it. Next time you see her, tell her thank you again. I, I try to remember to thank her at the end of each semester and say, thank you for sending your students because um, we really want to get the word out there that these resources are here. And um, especially if you're doing work after hours when everything else is closed, you know, you need some places to go to get more information. I mean, if you can't contact a person um, who's in that area, like, a, like our library closes at five o'clock, um, I know NMSU is open a little bit longer and everything, but you know, and they're willing to answer questions from DACC as well. But, um, uh, you know, we want to give you as many resources as you can to be successful in writing your papers. Ah, Dr. Magog. Ah, great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, don't forget to save the chat if you um, want the links and um, go visit our website, please take the survey. And I will see those of you next week. Uh, and we're going to be talking about refining your research question. Once you've done your preliminary search, you got to choose something before you can start actually getting your um, resources together and writing your paper. Thank you all for coming and have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Okay.